Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Ask Jeff Show. We are up to episode number 32, and we have three uh, brand new questions for you guys this week. But before we get into those, if you guys have any questions for me, just leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe to this live feed so you don't miss any future uh, shows. So our first question is, how do you determine what your top trainer is worth and how much would you pay? So there isn't like a specific way of determining, you know, how much you know, your top trainer is worth. It really depends on, you know, your market, you know, where you're located. And so you want to know like what the going rate is for personal training. Because most people are running boot camps and that this was, that's what this person is referring to is what to pay their top trainer to run a boot camp. So you want to go and see what the market, you know, what the market value, what the, what the going rate for a personal trainer is like in your area. So when I started, um, you know, my boot camp, uh, most trainers were making, you know, if they're working for a big box gym, anywhere from $17 an hour to, you know, $35, $45 an hour, depending on how much they were charging. Um, but there's a couple factors that you have to think about. You don't want to pay them the same that they would pay for personal training because a lot of times they're working the floor for free or for minimum wage and they have to find their own clients. They have to sell their own clients all on their own time. They only get paid after they make the sale and when their clients you know, show up. And they have to design the workouts you know, for, you know, for their clients. So with boot camp you know, uh, training, you know, if they're your trainer, all they have to do is show up, you know, show up on time and take them through your workout. Um, if they're designing the workouts for you, like if it's your top trainer, you can pay them, you know, a little bit more. Um, I don't like to overpay because, like, once you, if you keep paying them more and more, once once they um, are receiving that new pay, you know, for two or three months, it becomes a new norm. They've already increased their spending when they go out by, you know, fifty, hundred bucks. They've already started buying nicer clothes you know, nicer apartment, whatever, and it becomes a new norm. They don't appreciate it as much and they're going to be living, you know, the same, you know, type of lifestyle or within their same type of means and their stress level is going to be the same. They're always going to want to make more and make more. So other things that I would focus on besides paying them more is giving them recognition, um, you know, letting them know how well of a job they're doing, you know, give them a really good title if they're your top trainer. It could be like your head trainer, head coach, um, and always talking them up. And I like to include my trainers in the collective goal for our entire gym as far as like sales retention goes. And if we hit those numbers for the month, not only do our sales teams get bonuses, but everybody gets a bonus as far as the trainers are concerned as well. And you'll end up paying less um, by giving them bonuses than by paying them more per hour. So for me, when a trainer you know, started, you know, we were doing one hour sessions. So if you're doing 30 minute sessions, you're gonna wanna adjust you know, for that. And we start them off at $25 an hour because really good trainers were making about 40, 45, especially if they're doing it on their own. If they're working at a big box gym, it might be a little bit lower because they're, you know, they have to pay a certain percentage to the gym or to the studio that they're training out of. So I could justify the $25 by letting them know, like, you have a set amount of hours, you know, like the client's going to be there, at least one person. If they, nobody shows up, you're still going to get paid. You don't have to design a workout. You know, you just, um, you know, just showing up and taking them through our workout. There's no other, besides giving them a good workout, being enthusiastic, you know, high-fiving people, fixing their form, and being a good coach, after they're done, they're done. They don't want, there's no more interaction, there's no more sales, there's no more follow-up, anything like that that's required of them. Um, so it's just showing up, taking them, taking them through. So we start them off at 25, and then we would go up to 30. So we go up to $30 an hour once they've been with us for 90 days. So the first 90 days is like a 90-day probationary period. Um, just really a feeling out uh, if, they're, if they're a good fit for us, if the clients, you know, if the members like them or not. So after 90 days, we take them up to $30. And then for my head trainer, so the question was for your top trainer. It was just, you know, extra $5 a session. So they're getting $35. The head trainer, they get that extra five dollars per session. For one, it's going to um, incentivize them to want to come in more. But um, they would actually design the workouts, which was like one of the last things that I gave up in my business for whatever reason. I wish I would have given it up sooner because I started really hating having to design the workouts every day or whatever. And once they were working with for me for a couple of years, they already had you know everything down. They knew exactly 
my style, what I liked and whatnot. So when I had them starting to design the workouts within a certain framework um, that I had created, I started getting the extra $5 and it's totally, totally worth it. The other thing the head trainer is responsible for is, you know, time off for other trainers. So I always have a rule. Like once I got done training, I was never, that's one thing I was never going to do again. I wasn't going to train. And if, you know, the, if they want to time off, they'd have to talk to each other. The trainers would have to work it out between themselves who could get off, you know, who could, who could take the time off and who would fill in for them. If they couldn't figure it out, the head trainer um, would have to go and, and train those sessions. If, if the head trainer couldn't do it and they're coming to me like we don't have anybody, then they all know that, that that just means that we don't have enough trainers and I have to go hire another trainer. And when I do, in order to keep that trainer happy, I'm going to have to give them some hours. So I'm going to take a couple hours from everybody, including the head trainer. And of course, they don't want that. So we've never had, we never had an issue with you know, trainers you know, being able to take time off. They had each other's back. They knew that if they didn't, that I would bring somebody else in. It would be less hours for them and whatnot. But, um, so you want to find out what the market's paying the trainers. You can pay a little bit less than like the you know, above average for one-on-one -on -one training because they're not you know, selling the clients. They're not finding them. They're not having to work the floor at the gym or whatnot. Um, Start them off, we start them off at 25 for the hour. After 90 days, take them up to 30. Our head trainer was getting 35. And our entire team, from my admin to my sales manager to our trainers, um, were all in on, you know, we had our goal for each month was to net 10 new members. That was a minimum. And if we netted 10 new members um, as a whole, then I would do something cool for everyone. And it would be about, you know, something about $100 it could be anywhere from $50 to $100 in a gift um, for each person. So it could be a $100 Visa card. It could be taking them out for sushi for lunch. It could be buying them like all matching you know, sweatshirts or shoes you know, with our logo on them or whatever. Um, it could be something, something along those lines um, whenever we would net 10. So if we lost five members, we have to get 15 new. This was the minimum that I wanted to grow at without me being in my gym you know, at all. And... Um, you just, want to be, you, want to, you just want to be careful when you start structuring your pay with trainers with a percentage of EFT and stuff like that because um, eventually you're going to start resenting um, having to pay them more and more money as you grow your business when they're not really you know, contributing to the actual growth. I mean, they're helping with retention and you know, keeping the members happy and stuff like that, which is great. And that's why we, that's why we, we reward them when we hit our, our minimum of net of uh, 10 new members. Um, now, our sales manager, uh, we will pay on percentage base, but not not the trainer. I did that at one point and got to a point where when they were making, you know, an extra three, four, five hundred dollars a month based off of the EFT, then I could see that they were, you know, they started to get, you know, uh, complacent and, um, you know, I had to really start pushing them to keep the same level, you know, of, of training, of interaction with the clients, of staying after and talking to people, stuff like that. So that's basically it. Don't overthink it. Keep it really simple. Keep your pay structure simple. It's just 25, take them up to 30, and then we t end up 35. You can adjust these numbers based on where you're located or how long your sessions are, if they're 45 minutes or a half hour or, or whatever. Cool. So our second question is, this person says they have a lot of people coming in for their two-week trial and they want to know what the best way to close them is. So they have two-week trials. They're getting a lot of people coming in and best way to close. So number one, as soon as they come in for their first workout, they should be getting a phone call within 24 hours. The longer they go on this trial without be having any contact from you, the quicker they start feeling like they're just a number, like this is just like a Me Too program, like all the other programs they tried, and somebody's just trying to kill them in the workout, they don't really care, and once they're gone, they're gone, they don't think about them until they show up again. So a phone call within 24 hours is mandatory. Uh, whether you get them on the phone or not, you can leave a message, um, but what you're going to do is you're going to uh, call them up, just ask them how they liked their first workout, how they felt, if they have any you know, questions or concerns about the boot camp or about the program. And once, they, once they're done talking to you about, about how it went, you just want to like, oh yeah, and by the way, I just want to let you know that you also get a free nutrition consultation with the two-week trial. So it comes across as a bonus because you don't talk about this until, until you call them. So it's a new, free nutrition you know, um, consult. I call it like a free nutrition and goal setting you know, consultation. And I usually ask them like when they're going to come in next. Can they meet like 30 minutes for 30 minutes like afterwards? And then during that consultation, 
You're going to go over the nutrition guidelines, you're going to go over their goals, what they're trying to accomplish, um, and then you're going to use my nine close close. Which if you don't know what my nine close close is, you can go into our fitnessmarketerlab.com and you get a seven day free trial, you can look it up. Um, basically, you're going to be closing them within that first week. Usually with, on the second or third workout, um, within the second or third, fourth days that they're in this trial. And basically non-close closes, you go through the nutrition consultation. Once they don't have any more questions about their goals or nutrition or any of that stuff, then you just offer to let them know like, um, you know, I want to let you know what your options are if you were to continue. Is that cool? And they're like, yes, it is. And you just let them know what your options are and then let them know that they pick which one they'd want to be on if they were to continue, you'll give them half off their next month. And there's no obligation to continue. You have the rest of the two week trial. Um, what, you know, they're gonna give you the credit card information, they're gonna sign the agreement form, but if any time within the rest of that two week trial they change their mind, they have to send in an email to cancel and nothing will happen. But at the end of the two weeks, they still love your program and you know they will, then tell them just to keep coming in, you'll process their membership then. And that has been the best way um, that I've found to close you know, people on any kind of trial, whether it's a two-week trial, like all our all of our low barrier offers, we just consider trial memberships. So that could be a one-week trial, a two-week trial, a Groupon, you know, a 14-day fat furnace, a 21-day rapid fat loss, six-week transformation, doesn't matter. We treat all the trials the same. Phone call, get them in for the nutrition consultation as fast, you know, as soon as possible. It's about 30 minutes, and then you're gonna do the non-close close. You want them to, to agree to a long-term you know, membership, you know, within that first week of any trial. That way, all you have to do is focus on getting them results, keeping them happy, giving them recognition, introducing them to the community, introducing them to them, other people so they get friends, and making sure that they're, you're, not, you know, you're not giving them any excuse or any reason to quit during the rest of that trial. And then you can do that, you can you know, ensure that by following my onboarding system or my onboarding program, which is also in the Fitness Marketer Lab. And the last question is, this person, they just want to know, like, what is the best method for getting paid in fulls? So paid in fulls, you know, they're really enticing. You get a lot of money up front, um, but they can cause some issues or some problems as well. Because every time you do any kind of offer or deal, um, especially to your existing members for paid in fulls, your EFT is going to go down. And what I've noticed when people do a paid in full, it's because they have a little bit extra cash laying around at the moment, um, they take you up on it, then they go a full year with no payments, and at the end of the year, you, you know, they're used to getting that deal, so you're going to call them up, offer them the same deal, they might not be in the same place to be able to put that kind of cash down again like they were before, and they would also don't want to go back and add you know, $200 a month in payments to what they already have going on. So, the, ret the retention rate for past the year on a paid in full, I found isn't as good as somebody that you know comes in and paying monthly comes in for the whole year and just keeps on rolling with the you know with the payment. Um, plus your EFT is going to go down. The good thing about paid in full is if you need money to expand, or you need money for new equipment, um, pay your taxes, anything like that, paid in fulls can be great. And the best way that I have found to uh, to get paid in fulls is to do what I call like oh the oh by the way close. So. What we were just talking about with the non-close close, once they sign the agreement and you're getting up, you're shaking their hand, telling them how excited you are to have them in your program, and you turn to walk out the door, all you're gonna do is just turn around and say, oh, oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know that we have a special program um, that you can get a, even more of a discount if you do paid in full. And you let them know what the discount is, and if they want, if they want to take, you, take advantage of it, you just sit back down and modify the agreement for them, and everything is good. If they say no, you know, I have to think about it or whatever, then I was like, cool, just go ahead and think about it. You have to the end of the trial to, to upgrade. And what we normally do is, just to keep it simple, is pay for 10 and then get two months free. You don't really want to do a percentage because if you, if you like two months free sounds a lot better than 15% off or 16% off. If you say, you know, you can save 16% if you pay in full. So here we're just like, you know, pay for 10, you get the last two months, you know, absolutely free. And if they take you up on it, great, you got $2,000 if you're doing $200 a month. Um, if they say no, you still have, you know, the agreement form, you know, signed for the, uh, you know, 12 consecutive months paying monthly, no big deal. So the oh, by the way close is the way that I found that is best to get paid in fulls. Now, if you're planning on selling your business anytime in the near future, 
do not you know, take paid in fulls for at least a year so that way you have none on the books because what's gonna happen is a person that's interested in buying your business, if you've already collected that money, they're gonna want those prorated. So if that person just paid you and they have 10 months left on their agreement, they're gonna want 10 months prorated. You're gonna, now they're gonna take that directly off the sales price. So if you have 30, 40, 50 of these and they're like $1,000 each that's left in the, you know, the paid in full, you've already collected that money, um, that's coming off the sales price. You're gonna be getting $50,000 less than what you could have if you didn't have all those, you know, all those paid in fulls. So that's my opinion and my take on the paid in full and the best way to get them. And that is it for this week. Thanks for, uh, for joining me and I'll see you guys soon.